I'm two-time Olympian and world champion speed skater Joey Mantia here with another episode of Skate Tips, a series dedicated to teaching you how to skate faster, longer. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover what I consider to be the most important thing in skating, and that's balance. Now, before you exit out of this video or go on to the next one because that sounds just too basic or because you think you already know how to balance in your skates or if you're just looking for that secret formula to make you a really good skater like that, I'm here to tell you it's not gonna happen overnight but this is absolutely the best thing you can focus on to help get you there. And despite what you may think, the fundamental skill set of balancing in your skates correctly is extremely difficult, but luckily you have me here to shed some light on what you're probably doing wrong and show you how to fix it. Now, your initial thought when I first mentioned balance was probably in reference to what your body does here on top, outside, and inside of your skate and how that affects your edges, but I don't wanna talk about that. I wanna talk about how do you balance from here to here? How do you find stability from the front wheel to the back wheel? And more importantly, how do you maintain that stability as you initialize and finish your stroke? Now it's a lot easier to find that stability and balance as you're just gliding, but the trick is not to mess that up and disrupt anything as you go from your glide to your stroke. The goal is to keep your skate settled. And by settled, I mean not moving your body weight around your skate all over the place, not rocking forward or rocking back at any time. Then, and this is the part people really mess up, is being able to control your ankle flexion so that you don't put too much pressure here or too much pressure here. And that's really hard to do because your initial instinct is to use the ball of your foot for a power movement. Think about jumping. If you go jump as high as you possibly can, you're gonna use your ankle flexion to get into the ball of your foot and come off the ground from the ball of your foot. And the reality is, unless you're doing a start or you're actually doing an, a really aggressive acceleration, you have to reprogram your brain not to do that because that's what causes your skate to become unsettled. And then your body weight and your skate are no longer in equilibrium. They start moving independent of each other and no longer traveling together. So how do you do that? How do you use ankle flexion to keep stability in your skate? Well, it starts with your center of mass. And if you need a reference point on your body, your belly button is a pretty good spot to start from. Keep your belly button right over the middle of your skate no matter what you do. And the reason for that is if you're rocking your body weight from the back to the front or the front to the back as you push, it's gonna be almost impossible to counteract that with any kind of ankle movement and keep your balance. It's just not gonna happen. But if you can lock your belly button in right over the middle of your skate and keep it there, then ankle flexion and controlling that will start paying dividends. It'll be easier to use that as a fine tuner to get that sweet spot right in the middle of your skate. Now, once you have your belly button locked in over the middle of your skate, then you can move on to your ankle and think about what your ankle is doing in terms of flexion. You have to really pay attention from the time your foot sets down on the ground to the time you finish your stroke. That's why this is so difficult because that concentration is very hard to key in on. It's also important to understand what your ankle does and how it can affect your skate, how it can affect pressure in your boot. The ankle can push the foot down by activating the calf, putting a lot of pressure here on the ball of the foot. The ankle can lift the toes up by activating the shin, putting a lot of pressure in the heel, and the ankle can lock the foot in flat to the surface that you're skating on if you activate both muscles at the same time. And in my opinion, that's what you wanna be doing. That's what guys like Bart Swings are so good at. They're able to keep their skates settled no matter how hard they push. And it's really important in the turns. And that's why Bart has some of the best turns on the planet. Now, the goal is to keep that ankle flexion under control and being conscious and aware of what you're doing so that your foot stays flat to the surface you're pushing on. And when that happens, your body weight gets in balance with your skate and starts doing most of the work for you. Anytime I bring up putting the body weight over the middle of the skate or pushing right through the middle of the skate, people always voice the same concerns. They say, well, my coach taught me to push through the heel. Or they say, I just feel like my skates turn better when I'm back here or I just feel more comfortable when I'm back on my skates. And these are all good points and there's a reason for each. And I'll start with the coaching one. Generally speaking, the biggest problem skaters have is not finishing their push with their skate balance. So they end up moving their weight to the front of their skate, they get really heavy on the ball of the foot, and they finish either really aggressively on the front wheel or over the top of it. Most of the time, beginner skaters, kids, are really bad at this, and it's most notable in the turns. So. 
the easiest and quickest fix for that is to tell people to push on the heels. And it makes sense. If somebody is doing something wrong by being too far forward or pushing too far forward at the end of their stroke, and you ask them to do the opposite, go to the other side of their skate, you're probably gonna get the result you're looking for as a coach, and it does work. Every coach I've ever heard tells people to push through the heels, and this is why. It is much easier as a reference point internally as a cue to sit back here and lock that out versus asking somebody to put even distribution of weight across all four wheels, especially when they're a beginner. So this is the go-to move, sit back on the heels. And the reality is it is the lesser of two evils. If you have to be too heavy on the back of your skate versus too heavy on the front, it is always better to be too heavy on the back because oftentimes you'll still skate pretty well. But the problem is you're still too heavy on one part of your skate. So you're loading up these wheels more than these, you're giving up grip, you're giving up roll, and ideally you wanna be evenly distributed amongst all four of your wheels. In terms of feeling like your skate turns better for you when you push harder in the heel, that is absolutely true because you're relieving pressure from the front of the skate, giving you better turnability. You're loading that up on the back, which is bending the wheels more, and that manipulation of the wheels will 100% make your skate turn more aggressively. The reality is though, if you stay balanced on your skate and use ankle flexion to keep everything flat, then your skate will turn with you and stay with you as it's turning. Also, if you put your foot down in a line that it should be traveling, it shouldn't need to turn very much or very aggressively to be effective. And that's true in the corners or the straightaways. It's only when you put your foot down really wide or you get this whippy motion with your under push that you have to self-correct to get back to a point where you can push and that's not what you want. When it comes to feeling safer being back on the back part of your skate, that makes sense because anything you hit in the road, cracks, pebbles, things like that, you're more likely to hop over them versus to dive into them or have them stop your skate and crash. So this is safer, but it's not the best bang for your buck. You're not gonna get as much as if you evenly distribute your weight over all four of your wheels and find that balance point right in the middle using the ankle flexion to keep a flat foot and just staying in the sweet spot of your skate, letting the equilibrium between your body and your skate actually do the work for you. Okay, so now you know what you're supposed to do. Let me leave you with some visualization techniques that can help you get there because the reality is your skate gives you almost no feedback. You have four wheels or three wheels all in a flat line skating across a flat surface. So if you rock forward a little bit or rock back or push forward or push back, your skate tells you almost nothing. It just keeps on traveling just a little less effectively. And it's really hard to pick that out if you haven't been skating your entire life like I have. So here's a few things you can think about to help you get there. One, think about one giant wheel. So take away these four wheels, three wheels, whatever you have, and you have just one wheel in the middle that's mounted right in the middle of your frame, and you have to have perfect balance, otherwise you obviously you're gonna tip forward or tip back as you skate. That's the first thing. If that doesn't really resonate with you, if that doesn't really make any sense, number two, you can think about a ski coming off the front of your skate or the back of your skate. So a flat platform this way and this way. And any movement back or any movement forward from that center point of your skate is gonna cause the front of the ski to into the ground or the back ski to do the same thing and dig in and give you some kind of feedback. And you have to just visualize that in your head. Obviously, you're not gonna have a ski on your skate, but thinking about it that way will definitely help you get that ankle flexion and that body weight right where it needs to be. Third, if those two things don't really work for you, number three, you could think about having your skate mounted only in the middle. So only a single mount in the middle. So take away these two mounts of your frame and you're mounted just here. And you have to be perfectly balanced on that mounting point all the time, like it's very delicate. If you rock forward, it's gonna crack and break. If you rock back, it's gonna crack and break. And you're just thinking about that in your head and try to keep that balance always. In closing, there's no magic movement that makes somebody better than others at skating. It's just their attention to detail and the basics that sets them apart from the rest of the field. That's gonna do it for this episode of Skate Tips. I'm Joey Mantia. If you like this video, please hit like, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.